the first part of the, of this lecture today just uh, expose you to contour lines and how we draw them manually. And the second part will uh, give you a civil 3D training on how to create a contour lines uh, with a software. Maybe you had this maybe in your first year to uh, generate contour map, but I promise you during this class you will learn more than what you learn uh, on the first year. So let's start. The first thing you want to do is we need some elevation data. Remember, without elevation data, we cannot create any contour lines. So in this exercise, I will use the same data set that I used in the first when I teach you how to import the points. Uh, if you remember the file name called P0123. P0123. And probably by now you can guess that uh, the first step is let's bring in the points. Let's bring in the points. If you have saved your file, <clears throat> if you have saved your file before, please just open it. Uh, me, I have never saved it. That's why I'll go back here and I will just bring the points in. If you guys remember, we go from menu points, uh, we go import, and then finally import our points. We uh, go ahead and locate our our file. Uh, my file is here. I will leave it for a second so you guys can locate uh, the file on your computer. PO123.txt. Then once you locate the file, then you hit open. So uh, next is uh, don't forget, please, the format, uh, which is uh, P E N Z D. Uh, we'll leave it for a second here so you guys can follow P E N Z D. And uh, after you pick the file format, then uh, what you have to do is uh, just give a second look at uh, the uh, uh, the preview where the first uh, column is your point number, uh, east thing, north thing, elevation description. Don't forget to add your points to a Boeing group. Remember, this is a brand new drawing, and that's why, because it's brand new, it means we have no uh, Boeing groups. Then I'll go ahead and create one right now. So here is my Boeing group, and we try to make a, and give it a good name. So we say, for example, it is 2-2-2021. Uh, uh, dash dash Let's say that's a date, fresh data collected today. And then uh, project name. And then surveyor initials. Again, that's not really a uh, something fixed. You can also change it, but uh, the point is please give your Boeing group a good name. Then hit OK. Then we're ready. I uh, will hit enter or OK. And my points are there. Uh, zoom extend. So Let's take a look at our data. Nothing in you, no surprise. This is exactly the same data that I, I taught you how to import the points and also about description, key set and point style and point label style. Now, to, in today's class, we'll do something else. We will go ahead and create a contour map. So in Civil 3D, the contour map is a byproduct, byproduct of something called a surface. So if you create a surface, the contour line is a byproduct of a surface. Now, I want you guys right now to look at the tool space, tool space. So on the tool space, as I mentioned before, tool space is one of the most important uh, uh, part of the interface. When you read the tool space, you will see we have something like point groups and we have other design elements. So far in my class, you know about point groups, and today you will know more about surfaces. Now, the thing is, when you look at surfaces, I'm asking you, do we have any so far, and how did you know? Do we have any surfaces available in this drawing so far? Uh, no, because we didn't draw lines yet and make them. Actually, I mean, the thing is, just by looking at the tool space, you should be able to figure out that we have no surfaces because look at this. For example, look at Boeing group. A Boeing group, there is a plus sign, so you can expand and you can see the Boeing groups available here. How about surfaces? You can see it's empty. There is nothing in here. So even, even uh, you don't see anything like so, like for example, like now, like now, for example, 
you can tell just by looking at the tool space. We have no surfaces now. Let's go ahead and create our first surface. And the way to do that, very, very simple. You just move your cursor and place your cursor on top of surfaces. Then take a right click. Take a right click. And you can see here, I got some commands. The top one is called create a surface. Very clear, very clean. So it means I want to create my first surface. OK, let's do that. So what happens here is, uh, you know, I, I, all I need at this point of time, there are four, four things you can do. You can give it a name. You can give it a description. You can change the style or render material. OK, so let's go one by one for the name. Uh, and this is something you will see over and over and again uh, in civil 3D. When we create something, civil 3D will propose a name for us. And when you look at my screen, you kind of know what is the proposed name. The proposed name is surface and then next counter. And remember, that's a brand new drawing. It means the counter right now is zero. We have zero surfaces. So if I hit OK right now, the software will call this one surface one because my next counter, counter is one. If I come back in a minute and create another surface, it will call it surface two, surface three, surface four. Do you guys like this name? I don't think so. So this one is not really good name. Typically, people for the surface, they, uh, they write some, some good description. For example, they can say EG for existing ground. Maybe if, if there's something is ongoing, like it's something that's ongoing, like uh, we keep cutting and filling, we also assign the date, stuff like that. So remember that we need to give a good name. Uh, for the description, I will leave it empty for now. And I will show you where to add if you want in the future. Also for the style, uh, the style right now it's two meter and 10 meter background. Uh, I will give you more details about style later on. So really at this point of time, don't change anything. The only thing you want to do is give it a good name. That's it. And I want all of you guys to look at tool space as I hit OK, because there is something is going to happen when I hit OK. So please don't look at here, just everyone look at surfaces. What's going to happen here? OK, now you see because now you can see there is a new plus sign and this tells me yes, there is another surface or maybe a few of them. So let's go ahead and expand and you can see below surfaces. We have our first surface created called EG. Also in the front of G, uh, before EG, there is another plus sign, which means I can expand and see what's under EG. Now uh, we also have mask and we have water uh, water shed, sheds and then we have definition. And if you expand definition, you will see uh, we have break boundaries or break lines or contour lines and so on. Now let's bring the data inside. Huh? So I'm going to zoom extend. So here is my data and some of you will say uh, Tahir, we have created a new surface uh, and uh, nothing has changed. I don't see anything. Oh, this is only my points. So where is this thing that you call it surface? Here is the tricky part. The tricky part is just like a point group. Remember, a point group is just a container, and that's what we did so far. We have created a container called EG. However, so far we have never pushed any data into our surface. So the surface, yes, there is a name, but the surface right now it's empty. OK, in order for you to start seeing something, you must push into the surface something like elevation data. And if you asking what do you mean? Here is what do I mean? In order for you to build your surface, you could uh, integrate into your surface boundaries or break lines or contour lines or something called DM files, objects, edits, point files, point groups, and so on. So what are those about 10 elements? Here is the answer. Those are like different uh, uh, like types of, civil, of uh, 3D data that you can build your surface from. We can build our surface from point files or point groups or maybe contour lines or maybe brick lines and so on. Now I'm asking you, I know that these names are very, very weird for you 
because probably you know nothing about them except probably only one thing. I'm asking you, which one among this list you're familiar with? Contours? Uh, we yes, contour lines you're familiar with, but uh, we have no contour lines available in this drawing. OK, so thank you so much. Yes, you're you know what contour lines are, but the thing is we don't have any contour lines. Remember, we're trying to push some data into our surface and I'm asking you. Group points? Point groups, point groups. So this one here you can see inside my drawing there is a point group which means I can start pushing into my surface some point groups. OK, and that's what we will do for our first exercise. We will push into our point groups. We will push something. Now, before I do that, I have a, a nice a discussion with you guys. You can see if there's some called the point files and some called point group. Can anybody guess? Just guess. Huh? Don't have to be 100% right. Can you guess the difference between a point file and a point group? OK, so for the sake of time, I'll just say it. So point file is your P O one, two, three. Your point file is P O one, two, three. The point group that's after you physically imported the points from the P O one, two, three into your drawing. Now the software allows you to do the both of them. You can create if you have already imported your points as physical points into several 3D, then you can build your service out of point group. But if you don't wish, if you don't wish to physically import the points into Civil 3D, you can right away create your surface out of this file here, which is PO123. And some of you will say, is that handy? Is that useful? I can tell you, yes, it's sometimes very handy. It is very handy when you have a very large number of points. Let's say you have a file and uh, you have in this file, you have a million points. And I know some of you will say, do, do, do we survey one million point using total station? Do we survey one million point using total station? The, the reality is no, because you know it takes uh, uh, years until you get one million point using uh, total station. However, I can tell you if you use a laser scanner, then <laughs> in few minutes you can get one million points because the data rate is very, very high. But the point is here, my point is, if you have large amount of points, large number of points, and uh, importing them will create you a problem. If you import in several 3D one million points, oh my God, the software will become so slow because every time you zoom in and zoom out, it will take five minutes to zoom in and zoom out, especially if you don't have a high-end laptop. So I can tell you this one was very handy for me when I dealt with a very large number of points. However, for our case here, uh, we have 1500 points. You can see I can zoom in and zoom out very quickly and uh, doesn't give me any problem. That's why I imported them physically into my drawing. Anyway, so now let's go ahead and uh, go to point groups. Then what you want to do to add one point group? Very simple, very, very simple. All you have to do is you click on the data type. In, in this case, I'm pushing some point groups then follow by right click. When you follow by right click, it tells you you want to refresh or add. It means I want to add a point group to the definition of my surface. Let's go ahead and do it. So add and what happens here is the software will give you a list of all the point groups in this drawing, all of them. So you guys see you can see, huh? I have only one point group called it, uh, February 2nd, 2021. However, this one by the name, it has all the points. Please take a note that never, ever, ever use this one as your source of your building your service. I know some of you will say, hey, Tahir, you know that all these points here, we have it here one more time so we can use underscore all points. That's very dangerous, by the way, because Let's say in the future you add another point group which is not really related to the same surface, then all the points will be into your surface. 
So please don't use underscore all points rather than specifically use a one point group. Now also one more thing is what if you have more than one point group that, and you want to add all of them to your surface? Is that possible? For example, let's say uh, you have a big project and uh, you send your surveyor to the site for five days and finally you have five data files and you imported them in five different point groups, but all of them they belong to the same thing, to the same uh, project and the same time. I'm asking you, can you build your service out of five point groups? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. OK, all you have to do is just to select all of them, like so cl click on shift or shift plus control and you can multi select uh, your surf, your uh, point group. Guys, now we're ready. All you have to do is hit OK. As I hit OK, there are a couple of things will happen. Please watch this. Number one is I want all of you guys to look at uh, for, like the point groups. There is something is going to happen here soon. Look at this. OK. Now we can see. Now we can see once you hit OK and uh, and pushed into uh, the surface definition a point group, there is a new dot here. This new dot here, it tells you it tells you that you have pushed some point groups into the definition of the surface. OK, one more thing is look at the my my drawing area right now. There is something new has happened. We have uh, something new, which is this guy here, and this guy is my surface, my surface. Now, before I give you more details, let's understand the following. Can I mix a match? Can I mix a match? For example, can I build my surface out of, let's say, two point groups plus some brick lines plus some boundary lines plus some contour lines? Can I do that? The answer is yes, you can. When it comes to the surface definition, you can mix any type of data as you build the surface. Now let's let's leave the let's leave the the tool space for now. Let's minimize everything and let's look at the date the, our. Uh, <clears throat> our uh, surface right now. So you know what I'm going to right now because my data is just taking the, the my view. So I will just for clarity, I will simply uh, hide my data. Can anybody remind me on how to do that? Anybody who have solved it already assignment number two. Just remind me on how we uh, hide our data. I'm referring to the to the points. Huh? Can I hide them? Point style none. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So what you have to do is you go to the tool space, you click on the point group, you take a right click, you go to properties, and what you do here is just simply change, uh, change the assembly, both of them, the point style and point table style to none, and hit OK. Now we have a better picture. Now what you can see right now is you see we have some contour lines, contour lines, and in gray, in gray, in addition to this thing here, which is called the boundary or the border of my surface. Now, time now to try to explore more about style. Right now, my surface is gray and we have here a boundary line green. So the thing is, can I change my style? I'm, I'm, now I'm referring to the surface style. And remember, in my class so far, uh, you learned about style before. We talked about point style. We talked about point label style. We talked about point table style. Now it's the fourth time we're going to discuss something called surface style, which simply controls the appearance of the surface of my drawing. OK, now are you guys following. Yes. OK, so now I'm going to try to train you on how to access the surface style and try to play with the surface style if you need to. And trust me, you will need all the time to change the surface style. Uh, even uh, during the, uh, you know, the compilation of your map, you will have to change the surface style to one or the other, and you will see this in my, in my lecture today. Watch this, please. So I guess some of you already, if you already get some experience, a good start in Civil 3D, probably by now you can guess how can I change surface style? Same as point group, huh? So what you have to do is one more time to tool space. Click on the plus sign, expand 
and here we go. Here is my EG. And wh what is EG? It is this surface here. Now look at this. I take a right click on EG. I go to surface properties. And look at this place. So this window here has all the properties of my uh, point, sorry, of my surface. And the name is here. What if I change my, my, my mind? I want to change the name. Very simple. You come here and then you edit the name. What if I want to add description writing here something about this surface? So this is the surface after the contractor removed uh, the stock bile in the northeast. Anything you wish to write here. OK, so you can write in the description. However, my focus really is here, which is about surface style. Right now, the current surface style is 2 and 10 meter background. And I want to explain for you what does this mean? What does it mean contours? 2M and then 10M background. 2 meter is the contour interval. So the surface or the contour lines you see simply it has 2 meter interval. So what's the 10? So the 2 meter is the interval. So what's the 10? Any guess? If you guys remember about minor contour and major contour or index, we said the rule is we label every fifth contour. So those major contours will be five times the contour interval, which means in this case I have a contour interval of two meter, while the index or the major contour will be every 10 meter. Now the last thing, what is background? Background, it's simply referring to the color. You can see it's simply it's gray. It is very faded where you can use it as a background. Let's drop this menu and let's see what are the available styles for me. I'll take you. Uh, and, and navigate you through of them because I can tell you uh, all of them, they are very, very handy. Let's start with the most important one, which most of you guys will forget about. No display. So what is no display? No display from the name. It means please hide it. I don't want to see anything at this moment of the time, at this moment. moment huh? So what you have to do is you choose this no display, you hit apply, and here we go. Where is the surface? Surface is still there, but it's just hidden. OK, next is let's go and look at border only and let's apply and hit OK. Now border only it to me to be honest sometimes and some of you maybe will not uh, see this benefit. Huh? Border only sometimes it's very, very handy. I'll show you how. So let's say you're working in the office and you're managing few uh, like few surveying crews which they go to a big site and survey every day. Can you use this border to monitor the, their progress? For example, this was surveyed on day number one, while this one here, this uh, the border of the second surface. Let's say uh, it's uh, they uh, survey this area here. OK. So let's say that's the border of day number two. One thing you can mention here, you can monitor the progress and also you can see the gaps. You can see this area here. Uh, both teams they missed and you have to give them a note to go and survey this area as well. OK, so through the border only because remember at this point of time you're not interested to see elevations or contour lines. You just want to monitor their progress, whether they finish and cover the entire area or they have to work one or more days. OK, so this is border only. Let's go ahead and show you more styles. So go to surface properties. Now if you drop the menu, you will see we have few uh, combinations of contours. We have here it was 2 and 10 background. Let's go ahead and do 10 and 10 design. Hit apply and see. Guys, do you see the difference? So this is 2 and 10. Probably I need to zoom in. Maybe it's very difficult to see. Huh? I'll zoom in. I'll bring this one to the right. I'll bring my properties again and put them side by side. So this is 2 and 10 M design. How about this one? 2 and 10 M background hit apply so the 2 and 10 m the same thing so there is no change in the interval rather than change of the color scheme so the background is light gray where you can put it as a background of your design while if you go to the design uh, style it will give you the same contour line with the same interval and the difference is you get different color scheme where the minor contour is in red and the major contour is in green and if you drop this menu, you will see we have three co copies. Huh? 
we have one which is one on five background and design, and then we have also a group which is five and 25 background and design. OK, now I'm asking you if I go back right now from two and 10 design to one and five design. Anybody to tell me what, what you expect? Overlap. Overlap between what, sir? Like it will be like messy. <laughs> that's not overlap. It means it will you will see denser contour. You will see more contour line, and that's exactly what will happen. Please watch this. Huh? So we're going from two and ten meter interval to one and five. Watch this. So this is what happens. You see more contour lines because we're simply cutting through the ground very, very frequently huh? every meter. Now, what leads us to a very in interesting discussion, which I kind of left it open in the first part, which is about 10. Let's go ahead here and go and do contour lines and triangles. So you can see so far, we looked at all these styles and now we're here. And those are not uh, probably, I have no time to uh, teach you, but we will see how much time we have next class. But look at this, contours and triangles. And I know some of you, you guys are aware what does it mean contour lines? But I know that some of you don't know what triangles are. OK, so what I will do is I will choose this as a, a style, then hit OK, and then let's look at what we have here. This is super messy. Huh? Lots of line work and probably none of you are following what's happening there. OK, you know what? We you guys know what contour lines are, but you don't know what triangles are. So let's go ahead and create and customize and create a surface, uh, a style that simply doesn't show any contour lines and show only triangles. Let's do that. So you can see one more time here. This is super messy because it's a mix and match. There are so many things here. There are contour lines together with the triangles. Let's hide our contour lines. To do that, I have to customize my style. And you guys remember how I do that. How do I create a new style that does not exist in civil 3D. You go here to surfaces to EG, right click, go to surface properties. Now, if you drop this menu, you see there is not a single style that shows you triangles only. Doesn't exist. And you guys know in civil 3D, it gives you the power to customize and create your own style. How? We don't have to touch this arrow anymore rather than going to the second arrow and simply uh, pick one of these options like say new or copy or edit current selection. I need some help. Which one you think I should use? Should I create a new okay. style? Kobe, thank you, sir. Always, always in most cases, unless you want to edit and short, you want to edit the, the style forever, you want to go ahead and say Kobe. Kobe current selection. And what it does, it makes a Kobe of what is currently selected, which is contours and triangle, and for you to edit and change. Here we go. So you can see here, I, I, I have here an editor. There are so many tabs, like contours, grid, points, and so on. However, please, 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 first thing you want to do before you forget is to change the name. What do you think about this name? Is it a good name for my target style? Remember, my target style is I want to make a style that shows triangles only, no contour lines. So it looks like I'm going to have to remove this part here. Also, I have to remove the copy, and I think we're good now. Triangles. Next is we want to hide my contour lines. I'm going to help you out only for this part. To control the appearance or, or the turn off and turn on some uh, features, you go to display. Let's go to display tab. If you go to display tab, what you see here is very, very similar to something you already know, which is layer control, layer control in, in AutoCAD. So the good news is the surface component, we have so many components, and the components are points, triangles, border, major, minor, and so on. Civil 3D creates every individual, uh, every individual uh, element in different layer where you can turn on and turn off the element. Watch this, please. All it takes me to turn off my contour lines are here. You turn off major, turn off minor, and what are we left with? We left with only two things, 
it means this style will show triangles and will show border. Those are the only two elements are turned on right now. It says visible here. Huh? Now, if you want to, if you want to change the style in the future to show something else and turn off, it is here. You go to display and then play with the visibility of every element. Are we good now? Yes, we are. So we have triangles on and we have borders on. Then hit OK. And what we do is we simply hit OK. And I'm going to move my window here so you guys can see the difference. Huh? I want everyone to focus here while I'm hitting OK apply. So what happens right now? Your contour lines are gone, like they are hidden for now. And let's hit OK. And now we can look at uh, the triangles. Now I know some of you right now, you know, when I said 10 TIN originally before the break, probably nobody follow up. What does it mean? Now time to visually see what does it mean TIN, triangulated regular network. Now this this is a bland view. And uh, if you really want to understand what TIN is or, or uh, like TIN is, you need to look at 3D. And I know some of you will say, you know what, Tahir, this thing here, which you learned the last uh, last year in your drafting course, what do we call this wheel? Anybody remember? Look up my cursor on the top right corner. What do we call this wheel? It is called navigation wheel, where you can hold the navigation wheel from any corner and you can rotate things in 3D. If you guys remember, to be honest, I I struggle with using navigation wheel. It's very hard to control, and I typically do something even better. I'll show you. So please, all of you, click on the surface. And you can see once I click on my surface, the surface has turned blue. And then take a right click. OK, when you take a right click, there are some commands at the very end. There is something called object viewer. And this is my alternative. It is very, very easy to rotate things and ban and zoom in and zoom out in this viewer easier than to look at to use the navigation wheel. So one more time, the way you get to na to uh, object viewer is you click on the object like so. You take a right click and then finally you go to object viewer. Watch me please as I hit object viewer. This is what happens. Now you can see my screen. Uh, I can use my mouse, my left button to rotate things in 3D. I can zoom in with the scroll scroll button here. I can zoom in. I can even click on the middle button and I can ban. So you can do things here very easily by rotating and, and banning and zoom out and zoom in. Let me take another angle so you guys can see. So this is my surface right now, and you can see my surface is not really flat. My surface is not flat. And let's zoom in and look at the building block of my surface. Can anybody tell me what is your building block? Like this surface is composed of what? Triangles. Triangles, exactly. Those are the triangle. And I want you to look at this one as a like a, if you guys have seen a diamond, huh? You don't have to own one, but probably you've seen one of the movies, huh? So the diamond, the faces are broken faces, huh? So the those those are simply three-dimensional faces. Every triangle is not horizontal triangle, rather than it's a 3D face connecting three points. So to make a triangle connecting three points. Now, also, if you remember, I talked about um, uh, the diagonals, right? Like one diagonal. And I think right now it's kind of hard to see, but probably next class we will talk about the diagonals. For example, let's look at this. huh? So the diagonal here. So we have two triangles which they're adjacent. So I could have this, this, this diagonal here, or also I could have this diagonal. And I can tell you not both of them are correct. Only one is correct, which the software has chosen and built uh, the, the ground from. OK. Now. Let's go back to, I mean, now you you have a way to look at what is 10. And let me remind, remind you the name, huh? triangulated, because it, it is made out of triangles, and it's irregular, because tri triangular size, you can see triangle size is not the same. So there are some small triangles and some big, and that's why it's called irregular. And then finally, network, because we have so many of them. Need to remind you, 
triangles are not overlapping. The triangles are side by side, side by side. Think about this one very much like a diamond, huh? diamond. Now it's time to close. And actually, before we close this object viewer, there is also other, uh, they call it here, they call it uh, visual styles. Uh, right now it's set to realistic. You can drop this menu here and you can do it, go to other uh, visual styles. For example, you can go to hidden and you can go to uh, shaded. So this is another visualization of the ground. OK, uh, to be honest, I like realistic. It's it's uh, it simply serves me to teach you what does it mean 10 T I N triangulated regular network. OK, then let's close this one and let's go back to our um, model here. This is a plan view. To explain further, I'm going to go to my points and I will simply go to my points and I will not really show. I will show the bit, the point like the benchmark and I will sh show elevation only. And uh, I will simply shrink the, the, the height a little bit, like let's say one meter. This doesn't do anything for, for the for the surface. However, it is help. It helps me to teach you better. So what I did here is I show I'm showing my points using the benchmark uh, point style and I'm only showing the elevation. Let's hit OK. Now we can see the triangles are not random. Actually, the triangles are connecting my survey data. So we have a survey data here and a survey point here and a survey point here. And what the software does is connects the three points by a three dimensional triangular face. Now I'll show you the beauty, the beauty of this surface, which probably none of you understand. Why are we doing this? Now let me ask you, we, do we have elevation here? Yes, we have elevation here, which is 87.17. Uh, we have elevation where we have point data that we survey using total station. But here is the beauty. Once you create your surface, I'm going to leave my cursor and please watch what happens. Are you guys able to see what's happening? Look up my cursor and there is a notation or text next to my, my, my uh, cursor. Can you read? It says EG, which is a surface name, and it says Z, and it's 87.354. You know, the magic right now is I don't only have the elevation point where I placed my rod and I found the XYZ, but rather right now I have a continuous representation of the ground, which means anywhere like I, my elevation here is 87.354, and anywhere I move my cursor, I'm going to get elevation. Right now, for example, it is 87.069. So let's test the software. Huh? Let's test the software. What if I move my cursor very close to my survey point? Anybody to guess what would be the elevation? Probably have to move a little bit. So as you move close to the survey point for sure, what you get is the point of where you survey. However, if you move away like in between three points, software will do linear interpolation. We'll simply interpolate the elevation here in between this elevation, this elevation, and this elevation, and find for you the elevation here. And this is something very essential for so many things. Among them, you draw contour lines. If you guys remember, we have done so the software will interpolate and find where is the point of elevation 80, uh, not here actually, here, in between this point and this point, there is elevation 87. So the software will find along this line where is the point that has ele elevation 87. And by finding all the points of elevation 87, we can draw contour lines. So you can see right now the magic of the surface is I do have a continuous representation of the ground, not only at the point where we did the survey, but also where anywhere on the surface. Now let me ask you, I zoomed out, I'm zooming out, and I'm going to leave my cursor here. And I think uh, maybe it's, it's very difficult for you, so I will have to do some formatting. So I will go here to the properties, and I will turn off my elevation, and I will make my benchmark big. Again, it doesn't affect anything. It's just better for you to teach, uh, easier for me to teach you. I'm going to hit OK, hit OK, and see what happens here. Now I have a bigger marker for my survey points. 
So I know I placed my cursor on every blue point and I'm going to ask you. I'm going to leave my cursor and uh, the, the software is telling me the elevation here is 96.363. I'm asking you guys a question for you. How many of you guys trust this number? Do you trust this number? Like, do you trust the elevation at this point is no. 96.363? No. No, and I know some of you will wonder why, why was that like the answer was no. Why we don't trust this one? Please watch this. If I zoom in here and the software is telling me the elevation here is uh, 89.944. Do you guys trust this number? Yes. Yes, we trust this number and some of you are, are wondering why do we trust the number sometimes and sometimes we don't trust it. Here is the answer. The answer is this process here is called the interpolation. Interpolation. So what do we call this process here? This is not interpolation anymore. This is called extrapolation because simply I'm asking about a question outside my data and you can see. Look at what the software did here. So in this area here, we have not even a single uh, measurement, a single point we don't have. So what happens here? The software just connected one point here, this point here with this point on the other side and simply created an imagination of what the ground looks like here. So I'm going to discuss something with you guys, which is interpolation, extrapolation. Those are mathematical concepts and they are completely acceptable, but in, not in every domain. For example, if we're if we're trying to see what will be the population of Calgary in 2030, can we do that? Yes, we can. We can extrapolate. So we have kind of surveyed Calgary population uh, in the last maybe 20 years, and we can look at the trend of the curve, and we can look at uh, you can come up with some estimate of the population in 2030. I can tell you it's sometimes acceptable in some domain. But in surveying, extrapolation is simply wrong because we trust interpolation where we have some surveying data. We are able to trust these numbers here. However, outside, outside uh, this area here, we do not simply do not trust uh, the uh, uh, the elevation here. This, this is very common problem, very common problem uh, for civil 3D and even other software. It happens always on the convex side. Please look at this side. So this side here is convex, while this side here is concave. So everywhere you have a convex site, like here and there, you always get a problem, which is called convex, okay? And uh, it happens, and we have a way, so the software allows you to edit your surface by removing this area of the surface. So we can simply, and that's something you will see starting next class, we should be able to remove those area of the surface because we know that this area is not correct. Uh, simply, that's only the imagination of the software and we must remove before we continue. OK, now we have 10 minutes. Do you guys have any question for me before we finish today's class? Uh, just on the DEM, I'm just wondering how you get those. Like this one's interpolating, I guess, through triangles or whatever, the triangulated, the tin. With the DEM, you're doing it, you were saying, in like a grid like with squares. I'm just wondering how you get the data points from a surveyor to be gridded out like that. Thank you, sir. Excellent question, by the way. Excellent question. So, so what happens here? Uh, Ryan, I think, is asking. Uh, the, the here, the model simply takes the, uh, the 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 data, the survey data, and creates a triangular face in between. While the DM, if I go back to my presentation, I'm not sure if I, I still have it. Yeah. So the DM is here, uh, and the DM you can see the DM is not like a not like a tin. So the tin is even this one. This one is just pretty. Yeah, it's very similar to the civil 3D. But this one is pretty uh, because you can color uh, every triangle by color depending on the elevation. So what Ryan is asking is uh, right now, here is what happens in 10. 
software will connect uh, three points based on algorithm and create a triangular face. What, and you can see our data is not regular. Our data is not regular. Our data, you can see uh, the, my surveyor sometimes increase the spacing, sometimes reduce the spacing depending on the topography. So if you have a uh, flat areas, we can simply increase the spacing. If you have a rough terrain, we have to densify my points. Now for that for that DM, which is here. So this one is DM and DM is uh, simply a grid. So the answer is to you, Ryan, is very simple. The answer is when we create a DM from a 10, we have to interpolate. So we come up with this, this point here. OK, so this point here, we want to know what is the elevation of this point while my data was here. So I have a survey point here. And I have a survey point here, and I have a survey point here. So there is a, a, a interpolation process which allows you to find the elevation of this pixel uh, based on the elevation of the three surrounding points. So we do interpolation to create our DM. Does it make sense for you? Yes, thank you. No problem. Any other question before we say bye for today? Okay, other question is I think somebody is raising the hand. Uh, that's Matthew. Go ahead, Matthew. Uh, yeah, in terms of the the two types, is is one of them like a little bit more accurate than the other, or are they like exactly the same? Okay, good question, you guys. You know what? I I have a. Can you please mute yourself because I'm hearing my echo. So this is this is a topic at the very end of our classes. Probably we can give you kind of a little bit of it right now, because you can see here we have two models. We can we have the choice to either store our uh, uh, elevation data on a tin model and uh, by the end of the classes this year, I will show you how to store your data as DM model. So I think what you're trying to say, Matthew. In comparison of 10 against DM, which one works better? I'm going to give you a short answer for right now, but you will get more details at the very end of our classes. This one is the way to go. This one here is the way to go. It has so many advantages over the DIM, and you can see the DIM already has some interpolation. You will have to interpolate all these pixels, and it's kind of discrete, while 10 is better. Uh, but that, that's a short answer. The juicy answer, which you will have more details, you will get it at the very end of the class. This one here has less, less advantages, the only good advantage about this one is a simple structure because it looks like a, like a matrix of numbers. And that's why when we write an algorithm to co uh, create contour lines or do anything, it will work faster on this model than the, this model. Does it make sense for you for now, at least for now? And I promise you at the very end of our classes, I will make both them side by side. I will show you, OK, here is your 10, here is your DM. This is what's good about them, and this is what's good about 10. And you can sell. 10 is for the win. 10 is way better than them. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Thank you so much. OK, any other question before we leave you guys work on other business? OK, we'll see you guys on Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thanks. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.